Hello everyone, my name is Ivan Skoldi and today we're going to take a look at the setcat in Godot engine. Setcats allows you to create a setter and getter for variables within Godot script. Before we begin, we need to prepare our main scene. So hit the plus button, select the control node, rename this to main, right click the main, add another child node, and that's gonna also be a control node. Let's name this other node. When that is done, press Ctrl S to save the scene and hit the save button. We're now ready to attach script to those nodes. Let's right click main, attach script and hit create. Let's do the same for the other node. Right click other node, attach script and let's name this other underscore node. And when that is done, hit create. So the first thing we need to do, we need to actually create a variable that uses the set get. Here we have my var, which is equal to zero by default, using a set get that will set this value using a function named set underscore my underscore var. And of course we have the getter, which is get underscore my underscore var. Creating the setter function, it will run whenever you try to set my var from outside scripts or from within the editor. If I were to set this directly from within our own script, we would completely ignore the setter function. Before we play this, we need to create our getter function, otherwise this is going to throw an error. So at the bottom here, we create our getter function called get underscore my underscore var, and this will simply return my var. So if you wanted to do some in-between logic, you can actually do it directly here. Meaning, whenever someone were to directly access this, this would intercept before returning my var, which will be the value it contains. Let us now hit play and see that this prints out. Setting my var with two, good. So what if you only wanted a setter, or what if you only wanted a getter? How would you do that using this method? Using a setter is pretty straightforward. We only need to set one of the functions. However, if we were to use a getter, you need to add a comma in front of it, and then the function name. And this is something that may easily be forgotten when you try to create a getter. Another neat trick with a setcat is it can allow you to create private variables. You can prevent other scripts from accessing certain variables, and that may be useful in certain cases. And the way we do that is by creating a setcat leading private variables to a generic invalid set and an invalid get function. Now these are just names I have myself set, you can name them whatever you want. To indicate that these are private variables, I have decided to use an underscore in front of the variable name. In order to prevent access, we need to actually create these functions. Let's do that at the bottom. When we run an invalid set, whenever you try to set the private variable value, this will intercept it. It will simply print out that you cannot set a private variable, and then it will print out the value you try to set in, and then we simply return. We don't set the value, we don't do this. And the same applies for the getter. Instead of returning the my var, we simply return. So we print out an error cannot get a private variable, and then we return. So in order to test this out, we are going to use the other node script. Having the script selected, let us get the parent and try to set my var directly. Here we try to assign a variable value using get parent, which is the main node, and then directly access my var one. And then we'll print whether or not the value is equal to null. So if we fail, we are going to print true right here. At the bottom here, you can see we have an error, cannot get a private variable, and then it prints out true. Which means we have successfully contained our variable within main.gd. Of course, this will also prevent you from setting variables. If I were to try to do this, we are going to print out another error message, that you cannot set a private variable. So let us hit play again, and now it says error, cannot set a private variable, and the variable you tried to set it to was true. Now the last thing that remains is to test out export and see how it handles from there. If I were to create an export version of this, let me comment this out. And at the bottom here we now have an export integer, which uses a variable called my underscore var. And by default we have set it to be equal to zero. And then we use a set get, set my var and get my var, which is the same as here, except we have added this in front of it. And this will allow you to control what you set from within the editor. We see that when we try to set the value, we are simply gonna set the value directly. But if I were to comment this out, and then go to the editor by selecting main, and on the right side here, we have the exported variable. As you can see, it is zero. If I were to try to enter, for example, 50, I press enter, 
when I run this, this is still going to be zero. This is not actually 50 because we are not setting the value from within here. So just to test that out, I'm going to print my variable. Print my var and then we insert the variable in here. So let's hit play. And now you see my var is equal to zero. However, we tried to set my var with 50, but we did not do that. We did not actually set the value. So this function will intercept any value where you were to try to insert into my var from within the editor. So you can control the values you insert right there. And that should cover the most basic uses using a set get. The code will be available in the description below if you want to take a look at this yourself. Thank you so much for watching this. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't and would like to see more videos in the future. Then perhaps I'll see you in a future video. Bye bye.